Hey guys, Veteran Trainer John here, back again with another Dokkan Battle video, and today I have my good friend and special guest on the channel. I want you to go ahead and introduce yourself, bud. Yo, Shaw, baby, it is Nindo XO back on Veteran John's channel. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, dude, it's always good to have you on. Now, today we are going to be talking about our opinions for the best banner units in Dokkan that do not have easy A's. So we've basically come up with about five. Uh, there's some overlap, you know, between our list. But uh, we're going to start with the honorable mention. So why don't you take it away, bud? So first honorable mention, Tech Raditz. And I'm sure a lot of you guys, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you guys have a special connection to this unit because of a particular game mode, Extreme Super Battle Road. So um, when it comes to, like, Extreme Super Battle Road or any Super Battle Road or any, like, multiple enemy phase, this guy is amazing. So he's getting attack 100%, defense 100%. Now, when there's multiple enemies, he stuns the attack enemy guaranteed, and he has a 50% damage reduction. Now, he does have more upon that, like plus an additional 50% chance and high chance of performing a critical hit when it's a Goku family or a Namekian's category enemy. But you're really not going to be looking at that. You're going to be paying more attention to that passive because, like, I think we can both agree that this is, like, one of the units in the game that guarantees a stun on a unit like that that's like absurd yeah, like that's usually huge. you're like <laughs> it's like a 50 50 chance but to guarantee a stun on a unit is absolutely insane so yeah especially in super battle road when that's like almost always going to be the case where you're facing multiple enemies it's huge that's a huge huge thing to have exactly so even by himself like solo let's say you take that passive away okay so when he's facing only one enemy he replaces that passive with 100% attack and defense. He raises attack and defense in every super, and he has a 50% chance of stunning the enemy. So this guy is amazing in every way, and I can't really complain about him at all. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't really add any more to that, except for that his links are pretty good for an extreme type Saiyan. That's, that's about it. Yeah, true. Those are, those are pretty good links. I don't even know you're prepared for battle, so yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. All right, so next we've got three units that are basically the same, sort of. So we've got the Krillin, the Fit Boo, and then Bergadmo, uh, if you guys remember that. So Krillin, he's the lowest on this list. So he gives himself 180% attack and defense, which is pretty good, uh, except for his stats are sort of low. And then if you have an Android 18 on the team, you get an additional 120% attack and defense which is huge, and there is an 18 on the representatives of Universe 7, but she's not the best uh, unit to bring along. He does also get a medium chance of evading enemies' attack, including supers, which is 30%, but, um, and he does have a high chance of stunning the enemy on super attack, which is pretty good, and he does lower attack. But um, he's just not quite as good as the Majin Buu shape-up unit, which also has a chance of stunning the unit on super. He gets 150% and then three key and an additional 150% for seven turns with a high chance of evading. Um, he's just on better categories and he has pretty good links for those categories he's on, but uh, definitely is held back in longer events by the seven turn restriction. And then we get to Bergadmo. Now, this unit does take a little bit longer to build up, but he keeps his 300% attack and defense, and he can have up to a 900% defense buff. That is crazy. All he needs to do is get super attacks. Like, this guy, the worst thing about this card is that he transforms under 80% HP sometimes. That's the worst thing about this card. And when, when becoming invincible for, like, two turns is the worst thing that can happen to the card it's a pretty damn good card yeah it's true. <laughs> i mean you can't really complain about that honestly if, you, if you're complaining about that i really don't know what to say because i mean even after those turns he loses i'm sure he's still gonna have a pretty high chunk of defense left from stacking that long so i mean yeah yeah i mean his his leader skills pretty bad but and <laughs> all right but these are banner units. You're not using them for the leader skills. All right. Go ahead. Go. You take the next one, bud. All right. So next one, Intelligence Vados. And I know a lot of you guys are going to say, like, hey, what about Whis? Now, 
when Weiss came, he had his shine, he had his moment, and he boosted Beerus fairly well. But then Intelligence Vados came like a month after, said step aside, and she basically does everything Weiss does, but better. So attack and defense 6%, high chance of evading enemies attack all across the board, that's going to happen regardless. Um, and her, her buff is built a little differently than Weiss. So what Weiss does is give a 50% chance to Beerus, just automatically, but just to Beerus. The difference with this unit is that she breaks down those buffs. So she gives a 20% attack and defense buff to Universe 6, Realm of Gods, Siblings, Siblings Bond, and Bond of Master and Disciple. So, um, yeah. The thing is that you told me, John, I didn't actually think about it. She actually benefits from this passive herself. So that's an 80%, like, into the 60% she's already getting. And that's a lot of attack and defense for, like, a side unit. That's not too bad. So yeah, for a support unit, that's pretty good. Exactly. So like on top of that, she's changing key spears from rainbow. And, well, she changes key spears to rainbow if there's a universe six category ally on the team, and at that she leads universe six itself. So, oh yeah, she also seals super attack. I forgot to mention that. She also lowers attack. She, I forgot to mention that too. I'm sorry. So <laughs> yeah, she's she just gets better. <laughs> yeah. talk about it. it just gets better the more you read her passive. Like there's nothing wrong with this passive whatsoever, and it's just. It's just really amazing. So, I mean, I got nothing left to say about her. Um, God's your human, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so next uh, honorable mention we have is the TN. Now, out of the TN and the Boo Piccolo, uh, those banner units, I think the TN is just a little bit better. S because uh, typically the super class Majin Buu Saga team is just a little bit better. So he gets uh, three key, 150% attack and defense, and then plus an additional 70%. When performing a super attack now that's calculated differently and he gets a, a total attack boost of 376 percent which is crazy he also greatly lowers attack and defense uh, on super attack and that is by 30 percent for three turns that's huge and then he also is a support of 30 percent attack and 50 percent defense for super class Majin Buu Saga um, allies that's it that's a pretty decent boost he doesn't offer key though which, if he did offer key, he probably would be on the actual list itself. He also has a 40% chance to stun attack enemy for one turn. If that was a two-turn stun, he'd also probably make it on the list. <laughs> his, uh, his links are a little, little lackluster. I mean, experienced fighters and Z fighters, and obviously first battle, probably the easiest ones he have to actually get. But, um, yeah, that's sort of why he's... Uh, not on the list, but he's still a really good unit. For sure. Sure. All right. So now we're going to get to the actual list itself. So I'm going to start. So with five, I've got two units here, um, which are basically just slightly very, like basically the same, but with slight variances. So I'm going to start with Bardock and Gine. Um, they greatly raise attack and defense for one turn. Uh, so does the Trunks in my unit, by the way. A lot of this is very similar, so I'll be flipping back and forth. So both these units give themselves 100% attack and defense at the start of turn. And then Bardock and Gine give three key and an additional 100% 100 attack and defense. There's an ally whose name includes Goku on the team. Uh, for the Trunks and my, that is a Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, uh, which will definitely be on all the teams they're on. They'll have a unit with that in their name which that's so that's 200 percent attack and defense and goku is easy enough so that's also a guaranteed 200 percent attack and yeah, defense. Goku just said so, it, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right this is this is a wordy passive so they also get an additional 100 percent attack if there's a movie bosses category enemy plus three more key and another 100 percent attack and performs a guaranteed crit when facing a frieza unit so basically any unit with frieza and for the trunks and my that's um, a hundred percent attack when there's a future saga category enemy and then three key hundred percent and performs a crit when there's a Samasu or a Goku black enemy. Oh man, that's a mouthful. So it's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> right. The main difference is, is that Bardock and Gine, they have an active skill. That's a two turn support and the trunks and my have an active skill. That is just a massive attack. A, it raises attack by 628% for the active skill, and all attacks become critical hits and stuns the attacked enemy, while reducing own defense by half. 
And the only restriction on this one is that it has to be another Trunks team's future or Trunks future or my future attacking in the same turn. Uh, and it starts from the third turn from the start of battle. So that's pretty easy to do on their teams. And then the Bardock and Gine. They remove all allies' status effects and raise all allies' attack by 22% for two turns and can be activated when HP is 80% or less. Starting from the fourth turn, so there's there's a little bit more restrictive, but it it's a two turn support, which is pretty huge. Um, they got pretty good Saiyan links, and um, they this uh, Trunks in my unit has pretty good links for other Trunks units like Brainiacs. I think Cold Judgment's a very common one. Dismal Future, solid support or not solid support. That one's not really that great, but prepare for battle and fierce battle. So, I mean, both these units have, like, a potential to get 400% attack and 200% defense. And then they're just, their active skills are pretty crazy. They're both pretty crazy, respectively. Oh, man. I've, I've got to stop talking for a minute. Uh, you're next, bud. Hey, it's okay. Every time I look at their passive, it's just, like, <laughs> it's a novel. But, um, <laughs> right. yeah. And for me, like... It's hard for me. It's hard for me to budge on my top five because of how good they are and like how big that passive is. Because even without that mm -hmm. passive active, you still have, you know, basically everything you said. You still have that two hundred percent attack and defense, and above that, they raise attack and defense on supers, and they have that active skill. But for me, um, this unit you actually talked me into because I haven't seen him in a long time because <laughs> of his teams. Right. Yeah. Like AGL Neil, and a lot of people don't really like think about him. So this guy is attack and defense one hundred percent off the jump. Attack and defense 100% and reduces damage received by 10% to 77%. The less HP remaining, the greater the reduction. So basically, the less HP you have, the more you can rely, this, the more you can rely on them as a defensive unit. And when there's a Piccolo on the team, that's the thing. He has to be next to a Piccolo. So if this guy did that without Piccolo, it'd be a different story. I'd just like throw Piccolo to the side and say, like, you know, he's not needed. But Piccolo is necessary for him to activate that passive. Upon that, you know, the only teams you really have to pit this guy on anyway are playing Dynamic Saga and the Mechians. So, when I look at units, I pit them in their best situation. As weird as that sounds, I pit them in the best situation because I feel like if you're going to use the unit, you're not going to use them recklessly. You're not going to bring Nail to an event without Piccolo. So if you bring Nail to an event with Piccolo, this guy's going to have 200% attack and defense. Um, raise attack and defense on every super. And when I saw that passive for the first time on that super attack, that threw me off because this guy came out in 2019. That, that was, that's pretty, um, that's pretty good. Raising attack and defense on every super, that's pretty good. So at, at some time in the future, we're probably going to see greatly raised attack and defense in normality. But for now, at that time, that was amazing. So upon that, he has critical attacks when hitting a Wicked Bloodline enemy. So that applies for any Wicked Bloodline enemy who gets a critical attack. So, oh yeah, he launched an additional super as well. I'm sorry. Oh, I always forget to mention the other part. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, he's, he's a pretty good unit, restrictive. But for me, he just fits the cut because if you get beyond that restriction and eventually the Mechians evolves one day, that passive is not going to get hard. It's not going to be hard to get off at all. It's really not going to be hard to get off at all. So, Yeah, once they buffed the Namekian team up a little bit, I think like, this unit will be more prominent. But like as he is now, like I love this unit. I think he's great. Um, I I don't know. I have like weird fa fascinations with some units, like, uh, for example, this one and the uh, the physical Deborah. Like I have a fascination with the unit. I don't have that unit, but I like I really want him for some reason, and I don't know. I, that's kind of why this unit's my number four. Is just um, his the best way to run him is when he'll have his full passive, and that's crazy because Planet Namek Saga has a pretty decent Piccolo. Uh, even Super AGL has a pretty good Piccolo to use, which is the same as the Planet Namek Saga, and then Namekians obviously is ran by Piccolo, so. Um, I think this unit might even be a little bit better than the Dokkan Fest Piccolo. That's just a hot take. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to <laughs> I, I don't want to step in hot water. So at least we can both <laughs> agree with that. I, I honestly think he just destroys physical Piccolo in every way. At, at least before Piccolo transforms. After Piccolo merges with Kami, there's a little it's a little bit different, but but we'll we'll just we'll just uh hop over to the uh next one. Won't you 
Uh, this was my number four, by the way. So why don't you go ahead and get to your number four? Okay, so not my number four. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Supreme Kai <laughs> Kabito. Um, now this is another unit you talked me into because a lot of these units that are like side units, you don't see them a lot, but they're they're better than you think because like side units these days, they're they're no they're they're, they're no joke. They're no joke. I, I don't even, I don't even feel like calling them side units anymore. We need another name, but that's gonna come later. But <laughs> so let's let's just get to the nitty gritty. Key plus two, attack and defense 120%. Okay, okay. Attack and attack enemy. So whatever enemy they attack or like touch automatically has attack and defense minus 30% for two turns. So that's like popping an item and like, you know, well, on that specific enemy, that's like popping an item on them and basically making them useless and basically they're going to do like no damage to you whatsoever. And yeah. high chance of evading enemies' attack, including super attack. Okay. Um, Recovers 10% at the end of the turn. Okay. Um, greatly raises defense for one turn on their super. High chance of stunning the enemy. Okay. Um, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. That's not it. They transform. That's right. So you, you, <laughs> yeah. can, you can't forget about that. <laughs> you can use that active skill to transform them. And the thing I love about this, like, transformation so much, they share different passives. But depending on the situation you're in, you can say, hey, I want to be Capito Guy. I mean, Capito Kai. Or, hey, I want to be Supreme Kai and Capito. So, like, if you transform, you're not missing out on anything at all. He greatly raises attack and defense in one turn, causes supreme damage to the enemy, and seals super attack. Key plus three, attack 150%. All enemies attack and defense minus 20%. So, you don't have to touch the enemy anymore. They're just automatically one, minus 20%. And stuns the attacked enemy for two turns once only. Recovers 10% at the attack at the end of the turn. So like, even if this guy didn't transform, I would still say that that passive before is great and that passive after is great. The only difference now is that you can decide which one is better depending on your situation. So, yeah. When when I use this unit, um, as a, one turn I just couldn't get enough key to get a super attack in his base form, so I just transformed him. That fixed the key issue, <laughs> you know. And you don't, you're right, you don't really lose much when you transform. His links do change a little bit, so it's a little bit harder to get, like, a perfect linking partner. So, like, in Supreme Guy and Gabito, like, if you just use the um, SSR of this card or, like, the free-to-play uh, tech Supreme Guy, he's, he's a perfect linking partner except for Fierce Battle. So that's, you know, a little useful tip, but, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, he's pretty good. He's he's pretty damn good. Yeah, once you get that fused fighter, so he does he does get fused fighter after transforming. So that's a massive difference yeah. in terms of key. But like, he does give himself key. So I feel like that's not gonna be. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he gives himself three key compared to the two key. That's like I said, it's just one extra key, but that let me get a super attack. That makes a difference and it doesn't really change right. Much, so yeah, and he just gives himself a bigger attack buff. So I, I don't really have anything else to say about this unit. So. Amazing unit. So, um, yeah. I guess I'm passing it to you now, right? Yeah. So, um, both of our number three is the West Supreme Kai. So she's well, one. She's a realm of God leaders for four key, a hundred percent. Uh, four key is really nice to have as any leader skill, and a hundred percent is not a terrible attack buff. So for new players, you know, you want to run a realm of God's team. Like she's a really great leader if you don't have the Dokkan Fest leaders. Uh, she greatly raises attack and defense for one turn. That's huge. That means she's not really going to take damage. And she gets 100% attack and defense. Guards all attacks within the same turn after receiving attack. So the first hit is the only hit she's not going to guard. She's a Realm of God category allies. 40% attack and defense and a chance of performing a critical hit plus 10%. And that is huge. Realm of Gods is already one of the best and hardest hitting teams in the game. And you give them a 40% attack and defense buff and a 10% crit chance. So that is that is huge. Plus she's such a good tank herself. Like she just adds so much value to any rotation she's on. Like it, it's, it's huge, really. And she's got godly power, fierce battle, shocking speed. Uh, I mean, godly power is very common on Realm of Gods, and then most of them are fierce battle units. So, I mean, she's not the best-looking partner, but she she 
throws a lot at the rotation, for sure. Anything else you'd like to add? I know she was on your list too. I can't even add anything. Honestly, you pretty much covered everything. But just like, <laughs> even before her like TUR, she was one of those units who were like, you know, you can slap her in Roman Gods, you just get a forty percent. So like now, she says, yeah, yeah. She was she was ran as an SSR. Let's just look at her real quick. So she was a forty percent and seven percent chance. So she was really damn good before she got him. She just got much better after. That's- I mean, all, they, all I mean, if she gave key upon that, I might have to push her up. But she doesn't. She doesn't oh. give key. That's the only thing. Besides that, if she had just like done an additional like they did to God Topo, just gave her like one key after awakening, she she just would have been just that much better. Facts, but you no, know, she's still good, so I can't really complain about her. And there's nothing I can add on. So. So next one is another double, huh? All right, yes, another double indeed. So do you want to split these up, or should I just grab both of them? You can tell me. Oh, dude, you just go for it, bud. All right. All right. So a lot of people ask me my favorite, like, Goku in a game is, and a lot of times I say, you know, physical Super Saiyan Blue Goku, and then they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah. So, I mean, this guy, he came out of nowhere. Like, his TR came out of nowhere. So his SSR is really awful. We're not going to talk about that. But, um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're just going to leave that aside, toss that aside. Definitely a glow-up, for sure, for both of these units. Big glow-up, a massive glow-up. These guys, like, I'd consider them DFE-level units, and that might be capping, but, like... So they raise attack and defense on every super, both of them. And attack and defense, 20% per key spear obtained, plus an additional attack and defense, 10% if it's a physical key spear. And you might be like, oh, you know, that's really not that good because, you know, you need to grab key spears. Bandai said, okay, fine. We'll make them change key spears for themselves. So this guy literally lines up key spears for himself. He raises attack and defense. He stacks attack and defense on every super, uh, on every key spear. So, like... I can bring this guy to events and see him at like 200k defense, and eventually he stacks and he stacks and he stacks, he's doing 3 million damage, he's doing 4 million damage, he's doing 5 million damage, and then it's just on from there. And that applies for the Vegeta as well, so I think they're basically the same unit, and the only thing you pointed yep. out to me was that Vegeta had, what was it, Prodigies? Yeah, he has Prodigies instead of Kamehameha. Yeah, Prodigies. So Prodigies is a 15% link, while Kamehameha is, let's see, a 10% link. So... It's a minor difference, and that's probably why we both decided to like just combine them and just call them the same unit. Because honestly, they're just they're the same exact unit. It's just it still blows me away to this day that these guys got so so much big of a glow up. And we don't have to talk about their categories because it's Goku and Vegeta. They're on every category you can think of. So, <laughs> yeah. right. right. I mean, if you have something else to add upon that, um, trust me. Um, go ahead. Go ahead and just add any glitter you want on these <laughs> and you want these <laughs> units because they're just amazing. So yeah, no. The the only little thing to add is like their stats are crazy similar too. So the only difference really is that Vegeta gets a little bit more defense and Goku gets a little bit more HP. So like really, they're very comparable units. It's like really hard to find like any notable differences besides this one link. Which after the link level update, like it's not even that much of a difference anymore. It's like five percent. So, and I think it might even be calculated differently because Kamehameha is on super attack. So, so I think it might actually be slightly higher, or maybe the exact same. I don't really know. I can't be bothered to figure that out. But yeah, crazy good units. Yeah, it's not a big difference. That's gonna throw you off. So um. I'll, I'll let I'll let you take the top one course. It's your video, and um, I'll take it away with these amazing um monster units. Um. <laughs> All right. So for number one, it was a tie in my opinion, uh, between the Khalifa and Kale. Um, the Kali they're they're both pretty similar. The main difference is is that Khalifa instead of getting additional attack and defense, she gets uh eight percent chance to dodge per universe six or Pepe gals unit on the team so <laughs> that's she could have over 100 percent chance to dodge if you, your team is full of universe six uh Pepe gal units that's crazy then she um guarantees dodge against universe of saga or pure saiyans which there's a lot of in this game and then um she has a she launches an additional attack that has a medium chance of becoming a super attack when there is an ally whose name includes Kale attacking in the same turn. 
This also includes the LR Kellen Khalifa, which is huge. Uh, she's got pretty good. Uh, basically, she links up perfectly with the STR Kel, which is what uh, Nindo is going to talk about next. And her categories, I mean, they're not the best, but on Peppy Gals, you really want to run this unit. Universe Survival Saga, yeah, you could really run this unit. <laughs> uh, Pure Saiyans, she's pretty good on that team too. Not as good as Kale is, but Universe 6, definitely want to run her here. And then Rapid Growth, yeah, it's, she's going to be great with Kefla. Um, I mean, she, she raises attack and defense on Super. Uh, her leader skill isn't quite as good as Kale's, as you pointed out. Um, but it's still not bad if you don't have the Kefla. And she is tied as the best Peppy Gals leader. So it's like a four or five way tie now. But yeah, I mean, do you have anything to add about this unit? Not about this unit. The next one I do for sure. <laughs> for sure. Okay. All right. So we'll go ahead and uh, I'll let you talk about uh, Kale. I'm honored that you let me talk about this unit because she's just... Um... Again, this is all opinion, guys. This is all opinion. <laughs> <laughs> If you share a different opinion, that's fine. That's that's fine. Don't 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 hurt don't hurt yourself too bad. It's fine. Anyway, so off the bat, I'm not even going. I'm not even going to go into her pass. I'm going to go into her leader skill. This is a unit you can pull unfeatured. So, 120 percent to pure Saiyans and key plus three. Um, so what what is what is Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta doing right now? As a let's see, Super Saiyan Blue E Vegeta. Let's see his leader. Skill. I think he's like. 130% attack and then 170%. Are you talking about evolution Vegeta or the uh, physical one? I think it's 130% attack and then 170% HP and defense. Okay, so let me just pull him up real quick and just like yeah, yeah, just be sure. So yeah, 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 yeah. So it's not it's not that it's not that big of a difference. I mean, honestly, like um, if I if I had to pull one of these units, you might call me crazy. I would literally want to pull Kale over Vegeta. Now here's my reason why. So. 120% attack and defense for everything, and HP, and T plus 3, including Peppy Gales. And now we get into the passive, and this is the reason why I say this is like one of the best units in the game, period. Like this, I don't know why they made her so good, but she raises attack and defense on every super she does. And that's going to that's gonna mean a lot in just a second, but causes supreme damage to the enemy and lowers defense. And now we get to the um, chunky part of the passive. So I'm, I'm just going to read it like an essay, and then I'm just going to like talk about why it's so crazy. It's <laughs> <laughs> the best way to do it. The best way to do it. It's the best, the best way to do it, guys. Just, just read it straight through. Don't, don't, don't like, uh, okay, here we go. Attack and defense, 80%. Attack and defense, 10%. Her pure Saiyans, or Peppy Gill's category alley on the team. Launches an additional super attack when there's a universal survival saga. Launches an additional super attack if there's a pure Saiyans. Category enemy. Guards all attacks within the same turn when there is an ally who's called Khalifa. And like you mentioned, you could pet LRK on Khalifa next to her and she's still going to get that passive active. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, like I said, this is all, this is all opinion. You don't, you don't have to, <laughs> you, don't, you, you don't have to, you know, it's fine. It's all opinion. It's not, it's 100% not factual. This unit is like, you know, has a chance to throw out four super attacks. So her first super attack can launch easily. Universe Survival Saga is a massive category, so she's going to probably launch that easily. A lot of people bring this unit yeah. to the Goku event, and she just supers two times automatically. But, oh no, not only does she super two times, she supers another time, because Pure Saiyans is basically, what, 95% of the game, John? So Yeah, something like that. <laughs> like 70%, it's crazy. Oh, yeah, something like that. 70% about every, 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 every person you fight is probably going to be a Pure Saiyan. Almost every person you fight. But upon that, she can have her, you know passive unlock with her um actual like skill orb tree so i mean this unit is just insane it's just insane like she doesn't need a super to get a guard active she can have a khalifa right next to her and have guard off the top so you don't have to worry about her defense yeah. so let's say we completely scratch that defense away and just have the fact that she's throwing four super attacks at your face raising attack and defense on every one of those supers and lowering defense every time she supers you like um you good <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not i'm not actually i'm 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 glad you asked because this unit is just <laughs> she's just an anomaly so like you know i'm speechless at this point when i talk about this unit 
And let's talk about her link skills. The same lineage, same warrior race, battle diva, solid support, warriors of universe six, tournament of power, and fierce battles. So um now in pure sands, it's probably gonna be hard to pull some of these like, you know, links off besides Saiyan lineage, because like Saiyan lineage is key plus two. You do have yeah, to level ten so on link. So really you're just looking at Saiyan lineage, Saiyan warrior race, fierce battle. Yeah, basically, basically. Which is still it's like thirty percent a thirty-five percent attack, five percent defense, and two key. Like that's, she doesn't need all that. She gets ten percent attack per pure Saiyan or Pepe Gals, and that stacks. So she gives herself twenty percent attack. If you have Khalifa there, that's another twenty percent attack. If you have the LR kill and Khalifa, that's another twenty percent attack. You're already looking at hundred and forty percent attack and defense. If you have a full team of Kale and Khalifa units, which is very possible. Because you can run the LR, you can run the TUR, you can run the SSR, you can run all of those units. You can run this Kale, the other the Tech Khalifa, then you can run Super Saiyan Two Khalifa. You can you can run <laughs> you can run a full Kale and Khalifa team and give this unit what is it? It's a hundred. What it'd be a hundred and forty percent additional attack and defense. That that sounds right. 70, 70 for each. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so it, it'd be twenty for each. So it's for seven. So that's one hundred forty. So that's two hundred twenty percent attack and defense for a unit that raises attack and defense every time they super. They have a chance of like doing four supers against a universal survival survival saga pure Saiyan. So, so. it's honestly, it's honestly just crazy how unit this is. I, I'm, I, I mean, I remember her like. I remember bringing her just her SSR form to the freaking Goku event, and she was like doing three million. So when I heard she was yeah, getting she like dominates, yeah, just complete monster. Like I, when I heard she was getting a TUR, it just threw me off. I'm like, what? Are they like, gonna... what are they gonna do to these units? They're already so good. What are they gonna do to this chick? What are they gonna do to her? And like, even going back to Khalifa, like for me, like you know, they're just neck and neck. The only difference they share is one is one is doing four million attack and one is just basically dodging guaranteed. Like you really you really can't beat that. You really can't beat that. And for me, no. these are like DFE level units, like plain and simple. Yeah. Khalifa, I think, is like the first unit to guarantee dodge against someone. Like that's crazy. Dude, that's I think crazy. she might still be the only unit that like guarantees dodge against certain enemies. Guys are like, if you guys are having issues on, and let's stop talking about Kale for a minute, if I go crazy, I'm sorry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, so if you guys are like suffering on any event that has a pure saying in it, just slap Khalifa there, she'll dodge every super attack, you're fine. Yeah. Easy A's, freaking Dokkan events, like Super Battle Road. If there's a, if there's a pure saying there, she'll just dodge everything. Let's say, let's say, we, we have Super Saiyan 4 Goku DJ coming up, we have Super Saiyan 3 Goku DJ coming up, we have Super Saiyan 4 AGL Vegeta DJ coming up, so if you're having an issue in any of those, and like with that last spot, just slap Khalifa there, she's fine, she's fine. She doesn't, she doesn't need key or anything, she doesn't need to be under the leader skill either, she just will dodge, she's just a free, like free attack, like she's not gonna take any, like you need someone to, cause all the hits are concentrated, someone just throw her there, like she's very good. Just throw there. <laughs> You'll be fine. Everybody else will do their job and Khalifa will just sit there and just dodge everything for you. So it's like... Yeah. Man. It's crazy. Yeah, these units are crazy. Like, banner units have come a long way since I started playing the game. Like, a long way. Like, every new banner unit that comes out is like, wow, you're just so good, you know? It's crazy. They they well not not really because some the best units on our list are like some of them are old, older you know, but like they do do a lot now and it's crazy. Yeah, these 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 units are nuts. For me, the question would be is like, are they ever gonna make something that surpasses the monsters these units are? Because like, you're gonna have to do a lot to surpass what these two units are doing. You you're really gonna have to do a lot like. Yeah. I don't know what they could do, but if they make a side unit that's better than these units, I'm just going to call it LR because it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these, these, these cards are crazy. The cards are crazy. But, but yeah, guys, so that's our list. Um, 
I don't have anything else to say about these units. I think we've we've kind of went on long enough, don't you? Pretty sure we went on long enough. I don't want to talk about Kale anymore <laughs> before, before, before people click on the right. channel. I don't want that, so I'll stop. I'll stop. All right, so, uh, all right, guys. If you made it to the end of the video, please drop a like, subscribe. Check out my friend Nindo's channel. It'll be linked down below in the description for sure. Um, and uh, definitely expect to have you back on the channel again, man. It's always great having you. Appreciate you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Anything else you want to say? Um, that said, um, give veteran trainer John some love too. Obviously, this is his channel; you already own it. But um, he's a pretty nice guy. Um, this is our second video together, and um, honestly, it was just as cool as the first one. So, besides that, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and that's pretty much it. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye. Peace.